G'day guys, Cox Plate preview time this time. We had a bit of luck in the Caulfield Cup last week, hopefully a few followed along and, and this week looks a little bit more difficult, just a few different clashing form lines, things that um, make it a little bit harder to interpret. Moon Valley surface itself, the, the track is, is never easy and, and this race is, I think, about more about getting the, the map right and how they're going to settle it. Um, yeah, I think there's a few different angles and, and I'm going to share mine. I'll go through the horses one by one pretty quickly. I didn't do a short review this time, just a preview this time, just because there's only 12 runners. So I'll, I'll try and get through it as quick as I can. Um, first up, we'll start with the map, which, yeah, this is sort of the way I kind of see it falling and uh, I'll make it a bit bigger in a second. I, I think the key to this map and race is the three-year-old King Colorado. I think it'll roll forward. It's drawn just inside Zaki there. So Zaki's the obvious leader, but uh, if, if King Colorado sort of either decides to go and cross them early and then let Zaki cross it or I'll hold Zaki out, that's what I'd be trying to do if it's my horse. Obviously, that's a, a, a big step uh, to take in a, in a race like this, but I, that's how I see it unfolding. I think Alligator Blood's very likely to want to take a sit, so he'd be happy for King Colorado to cross and then either take the sit on Zaki or you know, that they, they've settled one, two, hits it behind, possibly Mr. Brightside behind them or two back defence, then Jua probably on its back, Miller tries, all depends on whether it jumps, whether it can hold a spot. And then you've got a horse like Romantic Warrior who's definitely going to be up there. Victoria Road, I don't think, won't will be too far away. My Oberon, all those horses looking for similar positions and then sort of Fangirl, Gold Trip are going to be the ones out the back with Pinstripe. So... Very interesting race, and I think that's probably the main variable is just whether the King Colorado checks in early, and that, that's whether that'll make a big difference to the map. First horse, we'll just go from the top, is Romantic Warrior to have a look at. Its, it's lead-up run uh, was the Gold Trip Turnbull. This race, they go up a million miles an hour, and... Uh, the so that, uh Yeah, they go really quick here to the sort of 600 metre mark and they still come home quick. The, the time overall is really fast. So a pretty brutally run race. And what I'm concerned about here is that Romantic Warrior comes into this race off a 132-day break. And to be racing keen, this is him here in the, the sort of uh, aquarium colours of the white, sorry, I'm colourblind if I get the colours wrong. Gold trips out the back here. They're the only two horses in this race that uh, partake in the Cox Plate, I believe. Uh, yeah, so he's up here in a fast tempo, pretty brutally run race, and I'm worried that this could have really flattened him. Uh, the trainer's come out and said that he's not quite ready for this race fitness-wise, and, and again, that could be a sign that the horse has just been a little bit flat in its work. So I, I think this horse is going to peak next time out. I'll fast-forward this to the business end because he does present, you know, in a nice position and presents to just about win the race. And, uh, you know, West Wind blows and Gold Trip obviously, obviously frank this form coming through the Caulfield Cup. But West Wind Blows ran away from him here and, and obviously came out and ran extremely well in the, in the Caulfield Cup as well. Uh, I think he was a lot fitter. Gold Trips had the nice run back in the field, come out and run okay in the in the Caulfield Cup. But he too himself was, was quite one-paced, I thought, in the Caulfield Cup. We'll get to see that uh, in a little while. But I, I just think that this, this run may have taken the edge off him. And if he was underdone coming into this, it really could have hurt him. So... Considering his favourite is quite short in the market, uh, my opinion is he's worth taking on here, and that's the angle I'm taking with Romantic Warrior. Uh, Zaki's the next horse to have a look at. His run was in the last run was in the seven stakes, so that was like 49 days ago or something like that, uh, 42 days ago. So six weeks ago, he this, this tempo was the complete opposite to the Turnbull, extremely slowly run to the 800. They slowed down further to the... 600 and then really sprinted home. So Saki's had an absolute ideal run following the leader here. The other horse to take note of in this race is Fangirl, who's back second last, and My Oberon, who's three back defence, number four. So they they get back off the slow tempo, so they're they're up against it, whereas Zaki's had the absolute ideal run. This is Fangirl getting to the outside and My Oberon sneaking up on the inside. Fangirl finishes off really well. So runs the fastest last 800, 600, 400 of the day, fifth fastest last 200. That tends to happen when a horse, you know, has to make a really long sprint and dies on their run. So she's made a 600-metre sprint uh, or an 800-metre sprint but sort of levelled out the last 200. It's completely acceptable. And 
it would be easy to argue, in my opinion, that the, the run of my Oberon and Fangirl were better than Zaki here, who is beaten by, I think, at Oberon the day. Zaki then comes into this off a 42-day break and no jump outs that I can find. So no public jump outs. Probably did a gallop or something in between the track gallop that I've missed, which is quite possible, but nothing substantial and has to come into this race quite fresh. There's a chance that it could dominate from the front and get a really nice run, but it's going to need to do that and really get a really soft time and, and basically have to find his best that um, we haven't seen for a while, which is, you know, un- unlikely for a nine-year-old to uh, to do that. So Zaki's up against it for mine. Mr. Brightside's next. This is the George Main Stakes. Again, they've gone slow here, slowed down even further, significantly slowed the 600-metre mark and got home quite far. So, again, we see Mr. Brightside. Fangirl holds a much more prominent position here up on the inside. Actually, race is quite keen. Mr. Brightside gets the absolute perfect run. My Oberon again is in this race. So, you can, at this stage, Mr. Brightside, absolutely perfect run. Vanguard chugging up on the inside. Uh, My Oberon's in front of it. So, there's the three of them. All had absolutely perfect trips here. Uh, Fangirl just pushes Mr. Brightside out of the way. So, uh, again, a sign of a bit of a flat run from him. I think he overdid in his up, lead-up trial. And when a horse does that, like uh, races too aggressively in a trial, then comes out and puts a bit of a flat performance in at their race start, they usually find it hard to bounce off that. So he's had to do everything in his power there, Mr. Brightside, to get past my Oberon. And I don't think that's good enough for him to be winning this. So I'm taking on uh, Mr. Brightside here as well. Out to 2000 also, a bit of a query. He did run okay in this race last year, coming from out the back off a wide draw. But I think he just, you know, he looks like he's going to get a nice run here from the soft draw. But I think he needs to find a, you know, he's nearly his career best here, which to me, again, is unlikely off his setup. I think maybe he's um, past it for this preparation. I think he's past his, I think he's peaked this preparation. He's on the down. So, again, that's my opinion. Having a look at Fangirl, which is obviously worth doing. She's so powerful here. Obviously, off a slow tempo over a mile, very different to potential faster tempo of over 2,000 metres around Moody Valley. Uh, I'll get to her in a minute, but that's just looking at her run there in isolation. Alligator Blood is the next horse. We're going to have a look at this at the Caulfield Stakes. This is the most recent run. They absolutely rock it to the 600 here, and they come home quite slow. The key to this is that um, Alligator Blood's the horse that's basically done all the work in the run to chase the leader. Uh, he didn't do a lot of chasing, like let the leader do a lot of the work, but he definitely did take off quite early. And whilst I'm not saying he had the most uh, brutal run, so like Tim hasn't done any chasing here, which is really important to how much work he's done. The, the leader's the one doing all the work to this point. What's the key is that he he kind of starts here. So that's the 600 metre mark. He makes quite a long run. Uh, the horses that close are from out the back. So you've got Bowen, Declare, and Jewis, who is in the Cox Plate, and worth noting here up the inside. They're suited by a brutal tempo, and they're, you know, two bullets, one a Melbourne Cup, but bound to clear. So uh, a very good effort for Alligator Blood to put this margin on these horses and then for only the stayers to close it up late. He's basically, you know, just hiding a bit of his merit is the way I best put it here. He's, he is the clear dominant horse in this race off the run that he's had, and uh, and only the stayers have sort of closed up the margin late when he's entitled to get tied. So he's definitely ticked the 2,000-metre box. Uh, the extra 40 metres may be a query, but he did run well on a slow track here last year, uh, only beating two lengths sitting outside a solid tempo in this race. So uh, he's a horse that definitely is better on top of the ground. He's going to get that. He's got the ideal draw. And to me, he's basically got to be, you know, close enough to top pick here because he looks like the horse that's going to choose when to put the pressure on. It's probably between him and Romantic Warrior. And that's the horse that usually controls the the overall tempo in a, in a cox plate. I can't see any other horse that's going to settle close enough to take off and want to put a bit of speed into this race. He looks the one that should hopefully be able to just sit behind the tempo and choose when he can go. And if he gets it that way, he's going to be very hard to beat here. Uh, you know, horses like Fangirl or, or whatever coming from the back are going to have to put in a big performance. So uh, Alligator Blood for me is the starting point. Gold Trip. Obviously huge in the Turnbull, came out and ran really well in the Caulfield Cup. But now blinkers go on here. Last year he did a very it was a very similar setup. So he went Caulfield Cup off a, a very slow tempo, sprint home, ran second, ran really well. Then he went to this race off the back of that 
slow tempo setup. So he went slow tempo, slow tempo. So he's coming into this race off a really fast run uh, Turnbull into an extremely fast run Caulfield Cup. And then he's got to back up seven days later, back in distance around here. And I think that's not ideal. I think it's an ideal preparation for him to have a clean out run here and run well in the Melbourne Cup. But I think coming back in distance to a Cox Plate, you know, it's a, it's a huge ask for a horse to be able to back up to brutally run 2,000, 2,400. He ran into 2,000 before that first up. So he's got 2,000, 2,024 back to 2,000. Extremely difficult. Obviously a talented horse. I'm not going to say he can't win, that's for sure. Uh, here he is here just sort of getting a little bit of buffeting. But to me, he's definitely a little bit one pace late. And and that's a sign to me that he's uh, he's going to be up against it coming back in distance here. And even with the blinkers on, it's going to take a big performance from this horse. He's capable if the tempo is way too fast and they overdo it up front. He's the obvious closer. But, um, yeah, I, I don't see that here. I, I think it's going to be more of an even tempo and, and the horses up front are going to dictate when they take off. So uh, I think he's up against it. My Oberon, we've, we've talked about quite a bit. He uh, he was in the same race as, you know, as Fangirl, Mr. Brightside. He hasn't ticked the 2,000-metre box, but he hasn't had a crack at it since he's been in Australia. He ran in over 2,000 back in the UK and, and ran okay, beaten two and a half lengths in a – sorry, beaten 3.3 in a group one. So, uh, yeah, I think he, he'll run okay, but I think, he, yeah, he's just got to find probably two lengths, even though he's got a nice draw, minimum – uh, up to this distance, and you know, I, I find it hard to see him doing it. I can see him being around the money, but yeah, I don't think he can win the race. Pinstripe is a horse that we do have to have a look at because we haven't looked at its most recent lead up. It ran in the attrition, I just get what race that was. So that was the Turak. Uh, a Turak, which is a, obviously a handicap, too, goes to wait for age here. Uh, the run was okay. And the run before that was good. Um, certainly the run before it was better over the mile around around here and Moody Valley. The run was okay here. But what I want to sort of note here is this is a, brut- a, brut- a brutally run 1,600 metres. So they went really quick, come home quite slow. And he's not bursting through the line. So if this horse was charging late and sort of strong through the line here, up to 2,000 metres and wait for age, you could sort of entertain him potentially improving and running a race. But... Considering he's not bursting through the line, he's got to carry more weight and run further distance. I think he's up against a pinstripe, and, and I'll probably leave it at that. Fangirl, we've, we've talked about her only 1,800-metre run in the past was in Group 1 three-year-old Phillies grade, so very difficult to line that form up. She settled closer here from a, a nice enough draw. I think she, well, she drew 9 of 14, so she was used up a bit early. Uh, the tempo very slow, and they sprint home extremely fast. So not a testing 1850, but... All you can do is win. She beat Hinge, who was in good form at this time. This is obviously, as I said, three-year-old Phillies grade, so very different to a Cox Plate, but it's the only time we've seen her pass a mile, and you can't say that she did anything but hit the line. I think she's run – let me just get this right. That, on that day, she ran – why am I not like those sectionals? Uh, she ran the fastest last six, four, and two of the day. Off a slow tempo, and she's done that a few times. She's a line finder. She's in the right stable to be able to be stretched in distance. They've done it many times. Um, she draws to give him a start. I'm not too concerned about that because she has the turn of foot to overcome it. She definitely needs a bit of tempo help. She needs a good ride from Zach Purton. She should be able to get the back of a horse like, you know, Gold Trip, Romantic Warrior. Um, she's drawn to be in that sort of position, a horse that could potentially get in the way is a horse like probably Victoria Road. She could even end up on the back of Militarise. So, there's plenty of bums to follow, something to track up, and I do think she's clearly got the best turn of foot in this race late to to overcome a start. And then she's just got to run the 2,000 metre out. If she does that, she's very, very dangerous. And uh, as I sort of said, but she's in the right stable to be dangerous. Jewess Jue, uh, she's been covered pretty well in this race. Her best work, her best runs are, are certainly around this distance mark, and she's, she's won out the 2,400 metres. She's been kept a little bit fresh after that brutally run. A term, what race was she in? Sorry, she was in uh, da, 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 da. she was in the Alligator Blood Race. So she was in the Caulfield Stakes. Been given 21 days to attack this. Or no, she's sorry, she's 14 days. She was going to a chance of running in the Caulfield Cup last week. Probably, sorry, backing up into that. She's been kept the 14 days, same as Alligator Blood for this race. And she can certainly run well from that inside draw. I think she's got a bit more gate speed than anyone gives her credit for. So I think if if uh, Mr. Brightside goes to the fence, she'll be on his back. 
can she win? I think she needs a lot of luck and a, and a bit of help from the others. But I don't think she'll be too far away. And she's certainly a place chance at worst. So I think the gate really uh, advantages her to be able to hold a little bit better position. If she gets all the breaks and, you know, a few things happen to the others. I do think she's capable of winning the race, but I do think she needs favours, that's for sure. Victoria Road is uh, the English Raider from the uh, Aidan O'Brien camp. We'll have a look at his. All I can find was a... Uh, This is going to make me log back in again. It's being mean to me. Um, yeah, there's, there's one replay which I can find from his UK runs. Here he is. Pardon me. Fishing and Sports is being evil. And they won't want me to log in. Can't log in. Here we go. That didn't work. Talk to me. Talk to me. in the UK. So this is him down the outside here, chiming in four wide. So this is over a mile group two. He, far, he didn't go very well at all over 2,000 metres first up. He's a, a group, oh, he's already won the Breeders' Turf two-year-old in the uh, in Marine America as a, as a two-year-old, obviously. I just thought his effort here was not good enough to, to be competitive at um, at Wake Parade in Australia. Uh, if he if he did, if he beats us, I don't think it's a very good sign about the quality of our horses. There's nothing to me that says that he should be winning a a Cox Plate apart from Blake Finn being willing to take the ride. But uh, yeah, seven weeks between runs off that two th up to two thousand meters, having to travel, uh, wait for age. There's just so much against him, and uh, yeah, I, I think he yeah, I've got to let him beat me here. Yeah, that's for sure. Into the three-year-olds, and they both come through the Caulfield Guineas. Miller tries a lot shorter in the market, which is interesting because he's a horse that's most likely going to get back and, and give him a start here. So at the start, two things to, to have a look at. So this is pretty standard for Miller tries. He's often a little bit slow. Uh, this is King Colorado uh, who rolls forward and sort of sits wide. So King Colorado's definitely got it over Miller tries tactical speed-wise. Draw-wise, he's definitely got that outside draw to, to race more forward. Pretty even tempo here. Uh, you see there, there was King Colorado uh, wide no cover, and Militrize is back with cover. So you've got to sort of weigh up, which is harder to do. I would say that racing more forward is harder to do, but it also shows that um, the stamina that King Colorado possesses, whereas I think Militrize is a little bit more dynamic. And you would say that uh, for Militrize to not get past King Colorado here, King Colorado's got to be a better run. He also gets chopped out here in a second. Uh, and you can see the sort of rider really can't get to him, and, and Militrize is not going to get past him really at any stage. Militrize has got to get around Moody Valley, which is not easy. If he misses the start, he's buried back on the inside. He could find a very tough position, whereas if they're positive on King Colorado and in, he's 30 to 1 and, and Militrize is only about $9, yeah, you know, I, I would be definitely making King Colorado a winner of some sort. I'm not saying you make him a big winner. And I, I potentially maybe chop out on Militrize if it gets out to $10 or something like that and not lose on the race. But, um, yeah, my my idea here is, or my opinion here is that uh, Fangirl and Mr. Burn, sorry, Alligator Blood are the two horses to beat. Alligator Blood going to be in the nice position up on speed. I think 650 at the moment. I think you might get a little bit better. Fangirl's around $9. I think they're clearly the best two plays in the race. Uh, one up on speed, one closing from the back, on with the turn of foot, and one that's just going to be in the right position, well set up, and should be strong. And then you've got the two wild cards in King Colorado and Militarize. Uh, King Colorado at $31 is a bit of a no-brainer for me just to, just to not want to let it go around. And if they gave it the old Seamus Award uh, lead all the way, uh, you'd be kicking yourself, I believe, to let this horse go around at $31. And Militrize has just got that X factor. So just keeping an eye on betting there. But definitely making the two best results this year for me, um, Alligator Blood and Fangirl. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I've been trying to get, keep up with most of these uh, previews during the spring. If you like this sort of content, I'll try and pump out a bit more throughout the year. So please like and subscribe uh, the, the post and, and subscribe to uh, the Racing Watch YouTube 
and uh, I'll kind of try and bring these as much as I can. And, you know, as I said, hopefully everyone got a result last week and, and fingers crossed for this week. Cheers, guys.